If you need to look for information about Azure Synapse Analytics, then you are in the right place. Welcome to my channel. My name is Ray Ang, and today I'm going to help you understand what Azure Synapse Analytics is. Now, let's start with a short history about this. Now, you might remember about uh, the time when this product came out. Yes, it's 2019 last year. And if you heard about this, and you might have heard that this is basically Azure SQL Data Warehouse rebranded. And you're right, in that sense. And this product came out in 2016. Now, there's actually another one that, if you go further back, there's another one called Parallel Data Warehouse. And this product was released by Microsoft in 2010. And it's the first SQL Server with MPP design, or massively parallel processing design, which basically, instead of using one server to process the query, it uses multiple servers. And it goes through, uh, this design goes to, to continue towards uh, Azure SQL Data Warehouse and also today with Azure Synapse Analytics. Now this product PWDW or Parallel Data Warehouse is a physical appliance and also uh, because of that is infrastructure as a service meaning if you bought this physical appliance you have to patch it, maintain it yourself. Now back to 2016 where with Azure SQL Data Warehouse uh, this one is basically the cloud version of BDW, with some slight differences, obviously. So it's a cloud version, and because it's a cloud version, this is a platform as a service uh, offer, meaning you don't need to worry about this patching or maintenance, all that sort of things. Now, back to uh, what we are talking today, which is your SQL the Synapse Analytics. It is the SQL Server, sorry, SQL Data Warehouse rebranded, plus other bits, like as you see, Azure Data Factory, uh, Apache Spark landed in, and also a new studio, a uh, new GUI called Azure Synapse Studio. Now, uh, from here, I want to take you through and break this down a bit more. The way I break down Azure Synapse Analytics is into four sections. If you play around with this product, uh, you get to open Synapse Studio, which i explain a little bit more later, and you can choose a storage for the first time. And, and that is basically a data lake. So this is the, the normal blob storage with hierarchical namespace enabled uh, data lake storage center that we all know and dear. Now, the next one would be the compute uh, section where this is basically the processing engine. And there are a number of options and the first one being the old Azure SQL Data Warehouse rebranded into Synapse SQL Pool. And this is provision, meaning you have to select uh, what spec of the engine of that is. And in this case, it's uh, represented as a Data Warehouse unit or DWU. Uh, the second one in the middle is Apache Spark. Uh, this is a, a Spark engine, or they call it Spark Pool, which is also uh, it is something that is provisioned, which is something that you decide what uh, what spec that you want. Now, uh, the to the end is I have Synapse SQL, uh, and this is on demand uh, engine. So basically, you don't need to provision uh, or or spin up a resource at the beginning. You basically just, for example, you can if you want to uh, run a query on a file, a parquet file from your data lake, you can just, uh, from the studio, Synapse Studio, you can just right click and then just uh, choose what query you like, uh, being, let's say this example is a select query and it will just spin up this Synapse SQL on demand. And the pay consumption model for Synapse SQL on demand, this is a terabyte uh, process. And unlike for Synapse SQL Pool, which is you basically buy the per data warehouse unit, and uh, it's different pricing as well, so just bear that in mind. And there's one here that I've put there sort of in between compute and orchestrate, which is Dataflow. Now, Dataflow is, uh, is basically a code free uh, data transformation that was already in Data Factory. Uh, it's a great tool if you uh, like to do uh, simple to intermediate transformation, uh, 
data uh, in Azure Data Factory. And the reason why I put that in the middle is because Dataflow is basically uh, using Apache Spark uh, engine to the process. And you, you will notice that when, when you use it in Azure Data Factory. And, <coughs> and the next level up is the Data Factory itself. And it's actually called Pipeline in SunApps Analytics. But it's basically, and I hope, is basically Data Factory, all from Data Factory features bringing it into Azure SunApps Analytics. But we're not sure yet. But hopefully, it's just basically that Data Factory is the same. And above the, the first layer is Develop. This is where you, you use this tool, uh, SunApps Analytics. And I mentioned it a few times that so you get this SunApps Studio which uh, brings all of this uh, interface together. Plus, there's ability to monitor uh, your, uh, your connections, your link services, and also uh, your clusters. And, and, and just like in Data Web Factory, actually, the way you monitor, the monitor pipelines as well. And last bit is obviously the management side of it. And I hope this is where uh, the, the kit uh, connection CICD and I hope that's that we will build in in there. Uh, they all will be in the management uh, section. Now, I just want to point out though that uh, all of this, except the SNAP SQL pool provision, is public preview. And what that means is don't use it for production. Uh, you can use it for uh, POC or testing or just for pure development. Purpose, but if you want to deploy this into production, don't do that. And at the moment, just only this one product, uh, Sign Up SQL Pool, that is uh, generally available, GA. Now, moving on uh, to what I would uh, see this forward. Now, if you remember the way the data warehouse uh, or the data platform uh, with Azure has been set up, it looks like if you see on the, on the left there, you have data sources or cloud source uh, data source there and usually the ingestion has been done by data factory and the preparation uh, of that data uh, could be done by either data flow as part of data factory uh, or data bricks uh, which means you may be able to do a bit more complex data transformation or data preparation there and the storage is generally been uh, data lake data lake storage gen 2 that and you process and you serve that data in SQL Data Warehouse or SQL, sorry, SANAP SQL pool uh, provision. And, and at the end, uh, the end users will consume the data with Power BI uh, in Power BI service uh, for that sake. Now, the way I see it basically, Azure SANAP Analytics kind of replace uh, all of this and, and bring them all together in, in, the, in this SANAP Studio which is quite fascinating. And I, I'm actually really excited to see that everything come together in one place rather than uh, you have to spin up everything else individually. And what this means is as well is you have one uh, development uh, interface uh, rather than for data factory, you go to data factory for a um, data lake, you open Microsoft Azure Storage Explorer and for Working on Azure SQL Data Warehouse, you open uh, Azure, uh, sorry, certain, uh, SSMS, so SQL Server Management Studio or Azure Data Studio. And, and now, instead of all of that, you basically just open the Sign Up Studio on the web to do all the work, which is pretty neat. Now, if I want to come back and suggest when. You want to use as a sign up analytics well don't do that uh, wait until it is ga because at the moment it's still all preview apart from sql sign up sql pool now if you're asking when to use sign up sql pool uh, provision and my general guideline for this is uh, if you are thinking whether you want to choose sign up sql pool or sql database for that say that comparison, then you want to consider the, the data volume that you're dealing with. If you're dealing with uh, multiple uh, terabytes of data, at least one terabyte of data, 
and growing in the future, then you want to go ahead with uh, Synapse SQL Pool. Now, uh, please bear in mind that I think I mentioned previously that uh, Parallel Data Warehouse being using MPP and SQL to Data Warehouse and Synapse as well using MPP design. What this means is uh, the engine is slightly different. So the taking the SQL database, for example, the, your queries that you build uh, in the SQL database may not be easily replicatable in uh, Synapse SQL pool. Basically, for example, merge statement, uh, as of today, uh, as a Synapse SQL pool doesn't support it. Uh, you can't just insert, uh, for example, as well, you can't just insert multiple records uh, uh, with the instance statement in Synapse SQL pool. You have to do it a slightly different way. So if you're thinking to start with SQL database and then scale up into Synap SQL pool, it's not straightforward, unfortunately. And there are other unsupported uh, features uh, in Synap SQL pool as of today, as of this uh, video creation, that I also will link in the description below for you to check out. And that's it. And another feature that is interesting that you should probably know as well is that Synap SQL pool uh, compute can be uh, can be paused and resume so that it uh, save cost a little bit if you don't use it. Now, that's it for today. It's about Azure Synapse Analytics, and I hope you find it uh, any use. And please consider subscribing uh, if you like this video. Uh, please uh, time thumbs up, or if you don't, uh, thumbs down. But please tell me why so I can uh, improve for my next video. That's it today for my uh, video today, and I hope. A wonderful weekend.